successful of psychic detectives is right about 87% of the time. Arnold confessed and was convicted. In this case, based on the actual files of a psychic investigator, the clairvoyant was also right, both about Arnold's sickness and the purchase of a gun. But she was wrong about one thing. Arnold said he did not want to kill his doctor. He bought the gun to kill himself. Because of their oft-times flamboyant roles in the solving of sensational murder cases, the psychic investigators become celebrities. Me. But none is quite so celebrated as the phenomenal young Israeli psychic Uri Geller. Geller's name has become a household word, made so by his renowned bending and breaking of silverware with his psychic energies. This is so heavy. Yes, it's happening. It's happening. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Oh, you. Yes, yes. That's nice. yes, it's bad. Look, it's yes. becoming... Yes. There. Yes. 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 You will break it. And there's no heat at all. To touch it. There's absolutely no heat. Is that uh, solid silver, Lobar? Yeah, of course. Made by Garrard in London. <laughs> <laughs> when I go like that, say, everybody say move. Just want it to move. Either either a whole compass or one, two, three. Geller's feats are psychokinetic. As one major study concluded after examining him stated, he has mastered the power to affect objects solely with the energies of his mind. <coughs> Here in a demonstration of these powers at Longleat in England, where all of his activities were strictly supervised to guard against fakery, he is attempting to psychically move the points on a compass. He is also trying to use some of the psychic energies in the room by asking a few people okay. to lock wait. hands. One, two, three, wait, one, two, three. That was a great swing. That moves the whole degree of Five degrees, that moves. This was, this was not much. I've moved compasses 20, 30, 40 degrees. Equally renowned for her psychic kinetic powers, but less well known to the public, is Nina Kulagina of the Soviet Union. Here, in an experiment supervised by a panel of scientists, she gives a dazzling display of her psychic ability. The scientists have determined that Kulagina's heartbeat quickens to 240 beats a minute while she is performing the psychokinetic task. At the same time, electroencephalogram measurements show that the waves emanating from the back of her brain generate 12 times more voltage than a normal person. Back here in the brain is something called the pineal gland. Some researchers believe that, that it's here that the electrical chemical components of the brain get charged up, disturbed, redirected, causing a sharpening of our extrasensory powers. Why does that gland work for some people and not for others? Well, I, I guess it's a trick of nature. For some of us are born with this gland bursting with power. Others are born with it inactive. Others, like, like Peter Herkos, suffer an injury that causes this gland to come to life. That's only theory, isn't it? Still unproven? Yes, yes, that's true. But, but what is proven is that we are made up of the same things as the stars. We are energy, like electricity. This energy pours out of us, sometimes against our will. seem to have a mind of its own. Mr. and Mrs. Mike Rogers of a small town in Florida knew nothing about such psychokinetic energies when suddenly objects in their house began to mysteriously move. Easy, honey. Easy, dear. Their phone began to mysteriously ring. Hello? 
Hello? Hello? Hello? Third time tonight. No one there. They did not know then about the powers of human energy. <laughs> Parapsychologists were called in to investigate the strange happenings in the Rogers household. First to determine if the house were haunted. Second to see if psychokinetic energies were being unknowingly unleashed. Oh, the pictures are always moving by themselves on the walls and the light bulbs explode. <laughs> what they learned was that Mrs. Rogers was energizing things moving them unconsciously with the power of her mind. Such psychokinetic powers are not as rare as they might seem. Children often unconsciously act out their hostility toward their parents in this manner. Or, as in the Rogers household, wives act out their hostilities toward their husbands. powers also one day mysteriously abate, go away as strangely as they had once appeared. In Mrs. Rogers' case, she came to understand what was happening to her, resolved her problems with her husband, and today lives in a quiet, normal household. Another kind of psychokinesis is that practiced by a former Chicago bellhop, Ted Sirio. Sirios is capable of impressing his mental images on unexposed film. He takes pictures of his thoughts. His feats have been performed under the supervision of a noted psychiatrist at the University of Colorado, Dr. Jewel Eisenberg. In this dazzling display of mind over matter, Sirios points a camera at his head, and instead of getting a picture of his head, gets an image of the thoughts inside. A panel of 25 scientists was invited to observe Sirius attempt his psychic photography. Later, all 25 signed statements that the experiments were valid, agreed that every safeguard had been taken to protect the integrity of the test. Here are some of the results of those experiments. In each of them, subjects tried to communicate target pictures to Sirio's telepathically. Then pictures were taken of Sirio's head. The first target picture was the twin-towered cathedral in Munich, West Germany. A photograph taken of Sirio's head resulted in this exposure on the negative. The target, a livery stable. Sirio's mind photograph. Here the target was Trajan's column in Rome. Sirio scored twice, with the column and with the dome. This photograph of a medieval town resulted in an obscure image. But this picture of the Air Force's projected manned orbiting lab looked like this as it was photographed inside Ted Sirio's head. The work of psychics like Ted Sirio's is now being chronicled and stored for research purposes, just as was the work of America's most revered psychic, the late Edgar Cayce. Here at the Association for Research and Enlightenment at Virginia Beach, thousands of documents attest to Casey.